Hello everyone, I know it's been a while. This is going to be a slightly different video. So I've had literally no one ask me about my workflow in the window manager that I use every day, which is i3. Though that's not strictly true because someone did ask me to make this video, but only after I told him about my idea. Despite that, here it is anyway. If you're a bit curious about tiling window managers and how it works for me, then you've come to the right place. Tiling window managers first of all rely on you being willing to navigate your desktop 90% of the time with your keyboard. I hear people talking about the learning curve and I'd lie if I didn't say that there isn't one. But it's like anything, once you learn it, it's like riding a bike. With the configurability of tiling window managers, you can customize your bike, so to speak, to your own liking. This makes memorizing key combinations that you can set for yourself a tad easier. First, to show you the desktop, as you can see, it is quite spartan. Up here, I have my current active workspaces. Then you have these little bits of information, which are courtesy of i3 blocks. i3 blocks is a simple panel program that allows you to display the output of various scripts. There are examples that you can implement directly from the developer, and you're free to modify or add your own customizations. My first one displays the name of the active window, then it's weather, which I pull from wttr.in. Next is the free RAM and CPU usage, followed by network statistics, playback volume, microphone volume and device, date and time. Finally, i3 will also display your usual system tray icons. Something neat about these i3 blocks is you can also set mouse actions for these blocks. For example, left click, right click and scroll wheel. To show you how this works, if I click on my free memory, it should actually open HTOP. There you go. Cue to quit. If I scroll up and down my volume, you can actually see the volume changing underneath it. Hope you can see that. And if I left click on my volume, it actually mutes and unmutes. Next thing to look at would be how I launch applications. And there are multiple ways. For example, many of you would be familiar with D menu. And if I bring that up with Super D, you can see across the top here, the panel has been replaced by a menu, which if I start typing, you'll see I can launch Firefox or any other program that I'd like, Escape. I've also got options for the XFCE application finder, the simple run command, but by far my favorite and most heavily used is Rofi to launch applications. This is Rofi. It's a very flexible and customizable program. It will launch your applications, of course, but it can also let you switch between open windows, as you can see here. It shows you the windows that I have open as well as the workspace that they appear on. So if I try opening an application like Firefox, start typing away, there it is. You can also run scripts with Rofi, such as this one, which I made that brings up a list of recently opened documents. You will also need to get used to managing how to navigate your desktop and open applications. The way that I understand how tiling window managers are meant to be used for your workflow is rather than having all your applications visible on a taskbar as buttons, you're meant to allocate these tasks or windows to various workspaces. For example, in my usual workflow, I have my web browser on workspace one, my media apps on Workspace 2, my chat applications on Workspace 3, etc, etc. Then, as a new task comes to hand, you can open up a fresh workspace and put that new task there. i3 comes with 10 workspaces out of the box, plus an additional scratch pad that you can throw one or multiple tasks into and bring it back whenever you need it. To demonstrate this, I can bring up my calculator and throw that to the scratch pad with Super Shift dash and now you'll see that there's an indicator here showing that there's one application in my scratch pad and now when I need to bring up a calculator I just do super dash and it's there push it away super dash and if I was to start doing some sums push it away comes back it's actually still open you can actually set up your key bindings however you like but this is just how I set up mine 
I can't quite remember the default key bindings for i3 anymore. And it would also depend on the distribution you're using if it's giving you a customized version out of the box. You should always refer back to the i3 config file if you're not sure what the key bindings are. Firstly, to move between workspaces, I use super, control, and my arrow keys. And you can't see that right now, but I've moved over to my previous workspace over here on my left, moving back to the one that you're looking at. To jump to a specific workspace, I can use super and a number. So if I jump to three or two or five and back to two, which is the one you're seeing now. Similarly, you can move between open applications. So if I use my super and arrow keys, you'll be able to see the focus switching between Firefox here on the right and the image viewer on my left. Or of course, I can use my mouse if that tickles your fancy. I can also tile my applications either horizontally, which I'm doing now, or switch to vertically. And within that, I can still open more applications too. So I can do another one vertically, which is my terminal. And I can switch to horizontal tiling with the next application that I open up by pressing super H. There you go. And switching back to vertical, it can get quite complicated pretty quickly. As you get a little bit more advanced into i3, you realize that applications can be tiled in a tree-like fashion. So you can sort of containerize your tiling in different ways, as shown by the picture here from the i3 website. Next, I'll show you how to move windows around your current workspace, but let me just clear out a few of these ones to make things a little bit more simpler. And I'll move back to a horizontal tiling there. So to move windows within your current workspace, I can do it with super, shift, and left and right arrows again. You'll see my windows have switched over. And with the image viewer highlighted still, I can go super, shift, left arrow, move it back to the left. If I wanted to move my Firefox around, I'll switch focus to Firefox and hold super and shift and move it around. And similarly, I can do it in a vertical fashion too. Currently, I've got my Firefox highlighted and I can move that down with super shift down and back up with super shift up. I can of course also move Firefox to a different workspace by doing super shift left, going all the way to a different workspace, which is my left monitor at the moment. You can't see it. I can then move it back to the workspace you're seeing by holding super shift and right again. There we are. I can also send applications directly to a separate workspace by holding super shift and the workspace number that I want. So for example, if I want to move Firefox to workspace four, I'll press super shift and four. And you'll see now what's happened is it's created a new workspace, workspace four. If I click on that, you'll see Firefox there. If I want to move Firefox back to workspace two, like I had before, I can press super shift and two. When we move back to workspace two, you'll see Firefox is back there again. So you can have windows in traditional floating mode as well. To show you, I will open up a terminal and I've bound my floating mode key as super tab. So you'll see now that I have the terminal window as floating. I can move it around with my mouse on the title bar as so. I can also move it around by holding the super key and clicking anywhere on the window as so. I can also resize by holding super key again and clicking anywhere in the window to resize. Of course, I can do all this from the keyboard too. So by holding super and shift and the arrow keys, I can move my window around. To resize, it's a little bit trickier. I need to go into what's called resize mode by pressing super and R. You'll see at the top here, I've gone into a different mode and I'll explain more about these a little bit later but essentially now I can resize my window by using my arrow keys. And to escape that mode, I'll press either enter or escape. To get all this set up, the most important file that you'll need to look at is your i3 config. The default one is usually located in your root directory at slash etsy slash i3 slash config. Once you run i3 for the first time, it will create a custom one for your user, which should be located in your home folder under .config slash i3 or simply .i3. 
I've got my i3 config files stored on GitLab along with a bunch of other scripts that I use for i3 blocks as well as a few other things. If we were to bring it up, gitlab.com, bleepy eyes Vince. Here we are, and it's located in my config files. Go down to .config, i3, and there's my config file. You can take a look at this at your leisure, but to quickly run you through it, first are my startup programs. I've got uh, my display settings, nitrogen for wallpaper, touchpad settings for my laptop, PyCom compositor, my power management, network management, and screensaver. My config file is taken largely from the Arco Linux one, so you'll see a few entries from Arco Linux here. Next, you'll start to see some of my key bindings, such as terminal, how to kill a window, and key bindings for applications that I run frequently that I want to launch faster than using Rofi. As we scroll down, we'll see a few other things. These were the launches that I was talking about earlier. I've got uh, some key bindings for how to move and resize windows you'll see here, how to shift windows to other workspaces. The workspaces are defined here. You can actually name your workspaces whatever you like, but I've kept mine as numbered one, two, three through to 10. I've also set up my workspaces so that on my left monitor, it displays the odd number workspaces and on my right monitor, it displays the even number workspaces navigating between workspaces. So here I've got how to move an application to a specific workspace. And I've also got here how to move an application to a workspace, but also follow the focus of that application to that workspace. So that if I was to move an application just simply through the above method here, I would have to then manually move to that workspace. Whereas down here with this follow up command, it's automatic. Down here is the section where I talked about with the scratch pad. And here is where it starts to get interesting. Here we start to see some of the modes I was mentioning before. This is an interesting feature of i3, which is that you can actually call up different key binding modes. They're essentially a separate layer of key bindings on top of the main ones outlined earlier in your config. For example, this shutdown menu mode is used by a lot of distributions that ship with i3 to control logout, power off and suspend. What happens if I was to bring up this mode by pressing super escape, it brings up my options. I can lock the screen, log out with E, S to suspend, R to reboot, or P to shut down. If I don't want to do any of those things, I can simply hit escape again to get out of that mode. This then returns me to my usual key bindings. I've also set up similar modes for resizing windows, changing the brightness on my laptop screen, changing the volume. This one's interesting. If I bring that up by holding super alt V, you'll see that I can now directly change my volume to 20%. Just keep a watch up here or change it all the way up to 100% by pressing zero. Or if I'm not sure what volume I want, I can just get into that mode and I've set it up so that if I use arrow up or arrow down, it'll actually change my volume by 5% increments. Hit enter or escape to get out of that. Underneath that, you can also see how I can define various applications to open up with various different layouts. So of course you've got your default tiling layout, but you can also set applications to open up as floating like I've got here, or tabbed. Oh, there's something I forgot to show you earlier. If I open up a few more windows, like so, other than the tiling layout, there are actually other layouts such as tabbed. So if I press super W, you'll see that my terminal goes full screen, but in actual fact, Firefox is actually still full screen behind it. But instead of being tiled, the windows are actually represented by tabs just like in your browser. See that, and I can mouse and click, or I can use my super and left or right arrows to change focus like before. A third layout is actually stacking. So to change to that, I press super S, and instead of being tabbed, your open applications are actually 
stacked but still maximized when you click on them or of course super and arrow keys now to switch back to my tiling layout there you go i'll quit out of the terminal so yeah this section can allow you to define how windows are open by default it depends on the application you're using whether it's best open up in various layouts next i've got bindings for my media keys on my keyboard I've got bindings for the global microphone mute that I made a previous video about. This section here opens up my i3 bar and i3 blocks when the system logs in. And finally here you can set the color scheme. Just as a quick side note, if you use i3 gaps, which is a fork of i3 as I do, you have built-in functionality to have transparency when setting the colors in your theme which is actually denoted by the last two digits of this RGBA color scheme naming. The A, I think, standing for alpha. I3 gaps will, of course, also allow you to set gaps between your tiled windows. However, I don't really use that functionality. So that's my brief rundown of how I use I3 for my workflow. I hope that it may have piqued your curiosity a bit, maybe about I3 and tiling window managers in general, maybe not. Maybe it's taking some of the mystery and confusion away or added to it. I don't know. The key takeaway messages are that yes, there is a bit of a learning curve when transitioning to a tiling window manager, but to make the process easier, you can customize your key bindings to what makes sense for you. There are going to be some habits from using a traditional desktop environment that you'll need to overcome, like reaching for close and minimize buttons with your mouse or launching programs from a desktop shortcut panel shortcut or menu, or learning to switch tasks using your keyboard or a combination of mouse and keyboard. Learning how to use workspaces effectively is also key to enjoying your experience in the tiling window manager. Thank you all for making it through to the end of this video that no one asked for. If you want to be informed of future content, please consider subscribing to this channel. As always, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, leave them down below for me and I will have a look at them when time permits. Bye-bye for now.